Okay, I've got a roller flex here. This one's uh, roller flex F3.5. It's known as roller flex 3.5 or automatic auto mat model K4A. It's uh, fitted with a synchro compour shutter with M and X flash sync. Schneider Zenar 75mm f3.5 lens. And this camera would have been made between 51 and 54. And as usual, it needs some servicing. This one. So what's its problems? Well, the shutter. The shutter is probably the most obvious problem. And the most obvious problem with the shutter is that the slow speeds are all the same. Which tells me that the... Uh, arm on the retard gear train is probably just stuck in so that it doesn't uh, swing out to its normal start position and therefore it, it is not running down. It's already run down so the speeds are all quick. Anything else? Well it's a few big cropper's ice bumps there on the leather on the wind side that'll certainly need some attention. There's something wrong with the focus mechanism. There's a bit of backlash. And that front standard wiggles. As I move the focus knob backwards and forwards, you're getting plenty of movement on this side. This side's lagging. It's doing nothing. So there's certainly a problem with the focus, and I'm going to have to deal with that. Anything else? Well, nothing particularly obvious from the outside, but quite likely there'll be stuff on the inside that needs to be dealt with. I'm going to start by removing the front panel so that I can access the shutter, because certainly the shutter servicing is comparatively straightforward for me, and um, it's a good place to start. Now, I'm not familiar with this model. I don't, haven't worked on one of these before, so it's slightly different from the rollies I have worked on. I believe that I don't need to remove the flash sink lever or the shutter release in order to uh, lift the front panel off. I've just got to peel my leather back to this point so that I can remove the four screws that hold this to the mechanism. The, mechanism underneath. So the only thing I've got to remove in order to deal with that is this button at the top here which would be for setting the um, self timer. Now I've already loosened that so it's just spinning off with my finger. If you look at this you'll see that there's two little notches in that screw. Now how are you going to get that, that? Now there's various options. You may be able to get at it with the tip of a pair of tweezers. Doubtless there's a nicely crafted rolly tool that just engages that very beautifully. I got it loose with a pair of needle nose pliers that have had the tips very heavily reduced at the ends to thin blades. Generally I use this for um, unscrewing lens retaining rings, things of that nature. Sometimes it's quite useful for that because the pliers are quite long so it enables me to get into the back of a, uh, a deeper camera. But that having been said, all I need to do is loosen that screw which, and then that just spun off with my fingers after that. That was very simple. You can see some green corrosion on the back of that. That's neither here nor there. We'll pop that to one side. And the leather. Will the leather come up nicely? It's always a, a question. I don't know much of the history of this camera. It may have been serviced previously. No. I expect it has. 
So it's anyone's guess what's been used in the way of glue to hold this leather down. So it's not exactly peeling away easily. I'm just going to put a drop of naphtha down there, cigarette lighter fluid. And if that is a, a, later, a later adhesive, that may well soften it and allow me to peel up the leather. If it's an old adhesive, it might have no effect at all. It appeared to do nothing. Alright. It's possible that that's held down with shellac. I will try a bit of al alcohol and see if that makes a dent on it. Let's see if this will soften anything for me. Well, it looks promising. I'll uh, try a bit more of that, see how I get on. If I can get the adhesive to soften with a bit of solvent, then obviously it means that I'm less likely to damage the leather by um, stretching it or cutting it. as I try to get it off. That bit that I've folded back, I can have a look underneath it at the fibres that are still stuck on the camera. I can't say that that solvent's really made much impression on that. I think all it's really done for me here is to soften the leather, because the leather's quite uh, dry and hard. And I don't think it really made much of a dent on that adhesive at all. Which means... And I'm back to using my scalpel to scrape under the leather to get it off the, the metal. That's not the end of the world. It's just not as easy. And those noises you hear, they're me scraping that scalpel right down against the metal as far as possible because I do not want to have the scalpel come up and cut through the leather. That leather's glued on quite well. Yeah, I'm being successful in getting that lifted off though. that distortion that you see with the leather there that's because it's stretching it means that some parts of it are stuck down well and the rest of it's lifting away there's the first of our fixing screws is right here there'll be another one down about here I think from memory
Now, generally speaking, I'd much prefer to remove these obstructions first so I can lift that leather off entirely. And um, then it's not so likely to get accidentally damaged while I'm working on the camera. There's nothing worse than having thin, fragile looking pieces of leather flapping around in the breeze while you're trying to uh, work on something. Once I've got the front of the camera off, I'll be able to investigate exactly how these two components are fi fixed. Not the lever, that's obvious, but the boss underneath it appears to be screwed down over the lever. If that's the case, I'll be able to see from the other side once I've got the front panel off and I'll be able to make a decision as to whether or not to remove those pieces at that point. Okay, so I've got the leather off here and there's the screw I need to get to is at this point. This is continuous, this leather. It all appears to be one piece. Later rollies, it was broken up. It would have stopped here and here and here and here. There may have been a filler piece in the middle, I can't remember now. Okay, so we've got that side loose. I've got to do the same on this side. Now there's a cut in the leather here to expose that arrow. Now I know that you can get uh, aftermarket leather pre-cut for all sorts of cameras and quite possibly this model too. But I don't want to use reproduction leather. I want to put this camera back together as it began its life with all its original parts. So I am taking great pains to get this leather off in one piece and undamaged. If you find that impossible or if you slip and make a real mess of it, you can always cut new leather or buy new leather cut to do the job. Um, sometimes that's a good thing to do because it's the only practical way of getting a good result. This is very well stuck. Leather's quite thick and it's um, old. It's, it's prone to delaminating, it's prone to coming to bits. Where is that screw? I can see one screw here. 
the other one I'm not seeing it which might mean that it's down here in the corner it is okay so I've got the leather back as far as I need the leather peeled now I can get my screwdriver in there and remove those four screws Okay, let's see if the front panel will lift off. Something holding me back at this end, it might be the position of the flash sink lever. I'm still being held back at this corner for some reason. I'll have a peer underneath and see what I can see. Well, as soon as I racked the focus forward, I was able to lift that off. Now, washers. Have to watch out for washers. So, seeing what I've got here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I've got to make note of where all these washers are. And put measure them and put them aside so that I know where they've come from, really. Oh, so I'm going to get a piece of paper and make a note of where all these washers came from. I'm fairly sure that came from that position because I can see the marks here which I believe is from that and the only alternative is that that washer came off that side there. Yeah. So I'm going to inspect these closely and see if I can find out Basically these washers are just used to level up that front trim, make sure that everything sits level. Um, the real important positioning is this front standard relative to the struts that push the front standard backwards and forwards as you adjust the focus. That's the critical stuff because that determines the uh, making sure that the lens is square to the film plane. These spaces at this piece here basically only just um, level up this front plate which although it looks pretty and it's important in its own way it uh, doesn't actually make any difference to how square the lens is to the lens board so I'll check these washers make a note of what I've got write it down and then I can lift them away somewhere put them somewhere safely where I won't drop them or lose them and I can come back and put them back in the appropriate places later. And it may well be I decide that I want to use a different shim in order to level it up. We'll wait and see. Well, looking at the shutter release piece here, it looks like that chrome boss that appears to be sitting on the leather maybe in fact sitting in the leather. The leather may be 
fit yeah, the leather fits around it. It's not screwed down onto the leather, so it's lucky I didn't try to unscrew it because it doesn't unscrew, it's staked in. So the leather would actually lift off over that piece. That's good to know. And the leather goes around the latch here. It doesn't go all the way to the front. I expect that I can lift that lever off just simply by undoing that screw. And this leather here almost certainly goes around this boss rather than under it like that too. Or if not, that boss may well lift off once I take that lever off. So that's interesting. It's lucky I didn't uh, do anything rash there, like try and unscrew parts that were clearly not meant to unscrew. Now this piece, what have we got on here that's of interest? Well obviously we've got the, uh, the lock for our sh shutter release. Um, I'll probably want to tighten that up because it's a little bit floppy. Here's our M and X sync lever, settings lever. And then we've got the wheels that give us our settings visible in the window at the top. And they're obviously linked in the middle there. You can see this is where it would change the settings for our aperture and shutter speeds. So, that's good. I can put that thing to one side. That's only... Uh, Less of a problem than this. Okay, so here I want to remove the shutter. I can see that my self-timer mechanism is up the top here by the looks of it. Well, that would make sense because these shutters didn't have a self-timer in them. My flash sync connection is held by a screw here to the wire that runs through to the, uh, the post. So I'll certainly need to unscrew that, take that screw out, be careful not to lose that, uh, that washer. And looking at the front, I've got four screws. No, I've got six screws actually. Yes, yeah, six screws that hold this together. Now looking at the lacquer that's holding those screws down, I don't think they've ever been off. I've got to have to make note of these washers because there's a washer under the heads of the screws here and here, here and here, and probably under the lacquer as well. So I need to make a note that those washers go under the heads of the screws. There may be washers, no, there's a shim plate underneath and I'll have to make note of those and there may even be a space of washer as well but I'm not sure of that. So I've got to be very careful as I take these six screws out and they're, they're washers. The screws won't be a problem. I note that two of the screws are black, the ones at the bottom, the others uh, nickel plated. These ones look brass only because they're covered in lacquer. And I'll need to make, take note of the shims that are either side here to make sure that the correct shims go back in the correct places. Um, all things being equal. Now this focus mechanism. You can see the wiggle there. So there's obviously backlash, one side is not moving. So that whole lens mount can't be coming up square. Well, it's got a real wiggle on it, look at that. So that's certainly going to need some attention. Yep, probably means that something's bent in there. Uh, it's not uncommon with twin lens reflexes. I mean, they're, they're quite large, they're fairly heavy, but they're mostly airspace. They're pieces of metal holding things together. Uh, in some cases, not particularly heavy. 
and um, things can get bent and certainly that appears to be the case here. As I wiggle that shutter release, that front standard is mostly this top corner's moving as I wiggle that. The rest of the stuff hasn't, doesn't start moving at all. So yes, there's certainly problems there. Something for me to deal with. Right, let's have a quick look at this now, see what else I need to know. For the flash thing, obviously, the screws. Now we've got our coupling for the uh, here, this coupling. That coupling moves the mask inside the finder. Let's see if we can have a look at that. That coupling here couples to an arm which works for our parallax, parallax correction mask which is visible in the finder. I don't think I can really show that to you here but basically the mask moves, covers up the top or the bottom of the glass viewing screen and that shifts as you move the focus basically to compensate for the fact that the lenses are not at the same heights of course. Okay, let me see about this front standard, get these screws out. I'll put some acetone on those screw heads. Only the two middle ones appear to have any lacquer holding them in place. But I'll do all six. I'm just using a bit of acetone there. Hopefully that will dissolve the adhesive or the lacquer. That lacquer is really thick and it's quite hard. It is softening. It's difficult getting my screwdriver into that slot. Yeah, it's very sticky. It's certainly melting. I clear out that screw head, otherwise I can't get my screwdriver in there. Oh, that lack is really hard. I'll try something else on that. Well, I've put a squirt of CRC ElectroClean on here, which is usually a fairly enthusiastic solvent. See if it'll loosen that lacquer up. It is softening, it's just not softening as much as I'd like. I really need that to be gone. It's not even the visible lacquer that I'm concerned about, it's what lacquer is run down underneath that screw head and the washer and is locking the screw in place. That stuff is thick. I may have to use another method. If I can't get this free like this, I'll have to use some heat. And what I'll do is I'll put a soldering iron on the top of that screw, which would soften that lacquer. That lacquer is pretty thick and it's hard. It's um, Not enthusiastic to go away.
course I can apply a lot of hard downward pressure on this because I don't want to uh, bend anything. So there's a limit to how much downward pressure I can put on my screwdriver so it just wants to cam out. Alright, I'm going to try the soldering iron trick on that. I'll report back. <laughs> 